Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Martin Fallopino, and I'm a family doctor of 33 years. But on YouTube, I'm known as Dr. Debunk. I debunk medical myths, garbage, and crap that's spread by doctors and other health professionals. Today, I want to do a video on, on the coronavirus infection. And I want to talk specifically about three things. Prevention, the first signs and symptoms you'll get, but also the spread. Because there's a lot of mis garbage, and crap being spread around about those three things. There's more to prevention than people realize. But let's talk about the spread of coronavirus. It's airborne, but yet there's a lot of talk about hand transmission, hand sanitizers, and all that stuff. And that's important. But the main mode is airborne. And so I won't get into all the things you've heard about, social distancing, etc. Um, the airborne spread is what's most important, and that's about the prevention. But before we get to prevention, which will be the biggest topic, let's talk about the early symptoms. Because what you're hearing on the news isn't quite correct. The first symptoms of coronavirus infection are the same as a cold and flu virus infection. In other words, what you're hearing is it a cough and a fever. Those are the first things you'll get. And then eventually that would move into like bronchitis and pneumonia, which are the serious manifestations. But the first symptoms are not cough and a fever. It's that little annoying irritation you get in your throat or sinuses or in your tonsillar area. When people get a cold or flu, what happens is you have this reality moment. That's what I call it. You have this moment where you say these words or think it. Am I going to get sick? And what does that mean? It means that you get this, say, tonsillar irritation. For me, that's what always happens. My tonsils start acting up, and at first I ignore it. Everybody does. Whether you get a little irritation in your sinuses, you just don't pay attention, but it stays consistent. It doesn't go away. I mean, coughing, I mean, people breathe water half the time because you're not paying attention when you drink. And then you could cough for 15 minutes because of the irritation of sucking water where it doesn't belong. But with an infection, there's an underlying inflammation that starts. And so after three to five hours, people have the reality moment. So I finally realize and stop and say, oh, am I going to get a cold or flu? The same thing will happen with coronavirus. It's a coronavirus. Coronaviruses are cold virus. Think of this one as just a mutant that acts more like a bad influenza. I mean, the unique characteristic of corona, as you've all heard, is that it spreads rapidly, but it can give people that are immunocompromised or elderly pneumonia really fast, and that leads to finally blood poisoning and then your demise. But we're talking about at the very beginning. So, to prevent coronavirus, you would have to recognize that you're getting those first symptoms of the infection. Let's say it's not a cold or flu, it's actually corona. And then if you could use a topical germicide, just like people do with their hand washing, if you could sterilize your nose, mouth, and throat, or at least reduce the germ count, well, you wouldn't get sick. I mean, that's how we don't spread it, by hand-to-hand -hand contact. But that's the dilemma. Supposedly, there are no germicides that you can spray in your nose, mouth, and throat. And that's where Dr. Debunk comes in. That is not true. There have been a couple products. There's one on the market today that has topical germicidal effects. So let's talk about that real quick. There are eight minerals that we know um, in health science that kill germs on contact copper, selenium, iodine, magnesium, iron. There's unique forms of those that are even better. That's been around a long time. And there's been numerous attempts to manipulate minerals as natural germicides. There's herbal extracts. I mean, the most famous one is, is echinacea. I mean, you can take an extract of echinacea and it kills germs. Now, I'm not suggesting it would work for this by itself. And then there's some other components that we won't get into. But let's say, for example, alcohol. I mean, you're hearing that you can use 60% alcohol 
and sanitize your hands. Well, if you could spray alcohol in your nose, mouth, and throat, you could prevent the spread of coronavirus. But you would burn like fire. You want to have chili peppers in your nose? And the problem is the alcohol would cause so much inflammation, you'd probably get a bacterial infection. So this is the dilemma. How do you spray a natural or even chemical germicide in the nose, mouth, and throat without causing inflammation, without it being so strong that you can't use it? So that is the dilemma. But the good news is the dilemma has already been solved. Let me explain. Four years ago, my colleague and I wanted to see if there was a natural way we could treat colds and flus. See, the problem with colds and flus, they're viruses, and antibiotics don't work. And so every year, doctors get inundated with people begging for antibiotics, even though we know they don't work. It's just symptomatic drugs until your own body overwhelms the virus and gets rid of it. But for 40 years now, there's been attempts at natural germicides, natural products that could kill viruses. Whether you know it or not, eight of the essential minerals that we use as humans, selenium, zinc, iodine, copper, and more, they kill germs on contact. There's herbal extracts, and now there's something called nanoparticle minerals that are germicidal. And so through a happy series of coincidences, I realized that we could mix some of these together and maybe come up with our own natural germicide that would help you get over your cold or flu faster, one or two days faster. But to my surprise, as we mixed up some of the early product, and this is four years ago now, um, to my surprise, people didn't just get rid of their cold or flu faster, they got rid of their symptoms in one or two days. That the topical germicide, just like a hand sanitizer, Reduce the germ load so much that your own body cures you so much faster. And so that began the process of developing what I call now KSK cold spray. And so this has been going on. At first, I thought, oh, this is going to be easy. My colleague and I have found something amazing. And then the problems began. I think I ran into all the problems the people who've come before me, my predecessors, ran into. And they're like right now as a product on the market that has weak germicidal characteristics. There have been a couple that have disappeared. This isn't anything new. But KSK works so well, but then, as I mentioned, problems began. But what finally culminated is a lot of sweat and tears. We have a good product now. And this year, we launched a company. Now, so far, this has nothing to do with coronavirus. And so this flu season, we went to a convention and got the word out. And so now, at this date, 2,000 of my patients over the last three years and beta customers have tried KSK cold spray. And about three out of four people will get rid of their colds or flu symptoms in one or two days. Now, it's not a treatment. It's not a cure. It's just like a hand sanitizer, only you can spray it in your nose, mouth, and throat. And it doesn't cause inflammation that's so bad. It just reduces the germ load. And then, after all this, what has happened? The coronavirus came along. Well, cold viruses are coronaviruses and and rhinoviruses. Flu viruses are influenza. And so the question is, Will KSK cold spray kill COVID-19? Well, obviously, I can't test it against it because I don't have any. But according to the CDC website, what they list is topical germicides that are effective to kill the virus, which are things like quaternary ammonium and 60% alcohol or more. I even think there's a certain concentration of peroxide. Based on what they say, I know my spray will kill coronavirus. Now, it's not a treatment. Don't hear that. It's not absolute. How effective it will be will remain to be seen, but there is no reason to think that it will not kill coronavirus. 
And so here's where this all goes to. KSK cold spray can be used as an invisible face mask. What I just told you a few minutes ago, what your early symptoms are, if you get early symptoms, and let's say it's coronavirus, there's no reason to think that you couldn't spray KSK cold spray the same way we use it for cold and flu viruses, and you would reduce the germ load enough that you would not get sick. It's a preventative tool. I believe this is absolutely true. I have the science to suggest why. This isn't some snake oil product that we just popped out because of the coronavirus. This has been three and a half years, almost four, of R&D and hard work to bring it to this point. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. KSK cold spray will work exactly the way it says on the box and on the website. I urge you to go to the website and read everything and decide for yourself. But this could be a great tool to prevent you from getting sick with coronavirus. And so it would look like this. If you were out and about, even though we're very restricted now, and you started to realize that it's been four or five hours and you have the earliest symptoms of infection from either a cold or flu or this coronavirus, which would be that annoying tickle in your throat or your tonsils or your sinuses. If you spray KSK according to the instructions, your symptoms go away. Now, again, we've done 2,000 people, and 75% of them have no cold or flu symptoms after the spray cycle. So, this is in some ways a public service announcement, but I urge you to look at the website. It's KSK Cold Spray and decide for yourself. My name is Dr. Martin Fallopino, also known as Dr. Debunk, and this is an important product.